Hey folks, let's talk about the Commitment of Traders report on natural gas and then have a look at the charts. Um, you can get this at barchart.com, it's free. And we're looking at the December natural gas contract. And this is the sort of thing you'll see on barchart.com. Scroll down to here, you'll see a bit of commentary, you'll see the current price chart. But the interesting stuff's a wee bit further down. We've got the Commitment of Traders positions report here and then the seasonal chart. Two things I want you to sort of notice here. One is that we're way below the seasonal average. The brown line is the average price for the last prior five years, seasonal based for the current period, basically. The brown line represents the average for the last five seasons at the current period of time. And the green line is the current actual price on the futures. You can see there's quite a big discrepancy actually reflecting the amount of contango, about 50 cents that we've got on at the moment. So we're well below the average price for this time of the year. Uh, that's the first thing to point out. That's pretty useful to know. That means we've got some divergence. We may need to catch up. It doesn't always have such a large gap, as you can see, looking back to the left. But then the Commitment of Traders report. This is super interesting. I've just done a session with my uh, webinar for my live swing trading blueprint session this afternoon. And we looked at this example. Let's have a look at what's going on here. The commercials, 689 to the long side, 533 to the short side. So slightly weighted to the long side. Remember that the commercials are mostly hedges. Um, that's not perfectly defined in that manner, but generally they take the opposite side of the market. So slightly weighted to the long side, not much, 689 versus 533. But look at the additions, plus 50 to the long side, plus 21 to the short side. So more long than short and adding more long than short, meaning that the commercials, the hedges, are estimating or thinking collectively as a group that this market's more likely to move down. Remembering we're moving into the new contract, the December contract, in a couple of days' time on Tuesday. We'll look at the futures stack shortly. The producers, which are also kind of hedges, but more speculators in there, I would imagine, um, and slightly less in position overall sizing, 268 to the long side, 287 to the short side, actually more balanced. Now, they're adding slightly more, 24 to the long side and 12 to the short side. This data is about five days old, so it's going to be updated in a few days' time. So the producer's not telling us an awful lot, fairly balanced, but the managed money, the speculators, the hedge funds and uh, institutions, mostly 314 to the short side and 181 to the long side, adding more, much more to the short side than the long side. So the speculators, the, the traders, the institutions, and some large retail traders in there too, are aiming more to the short side along with the hedges. So one of them's wrong. The hedges think it's going short, but so do the speculators, and normally they're on the opposite side. So even though they're all on the same side, it's actually a form of divergence. Who's going to be right? The non-commercials, who tend to be more trader types, uh, 243 to the long side, but 404 to the short side, and adding more, 40,000 compared to 13, to the short side. So the traders and the speculators and the, the hedge funds are all aiming short, but so are the hedges and the commercials. Look at the swap dealers, 205 to the long side, only 30 to the short side. Adding more to the long side and actually taking some off, minus 10 to the short side. So the swap dealers leaning heavily to the long side, meaning they think the market's going down, but so do the traders and the speculators. One of them is going to be wrong. Uh, not often that they both write at the same time. All right, so that's just the background. Now let's go and have a look at the chart. Let's have a look at our most familiar chart, the Henry Hub Day chart over at the uh, NYMEX. And there you can see the triple bottom, the rally up, the pullback to the 786, the squiggly line, the rollover gap, the double bottom at the same price level, almost perfectly, and then the resumption of the uptrend. Notice that we've got higher lows at this double bottom compared to the triple bottom. And this last swing low is higher than the double bottom low. So we've got an uptrend missing one important point, and that's higher highs. And in fact, the last high was lower than the previous one, which was lower than the previous one. All of that means is that we're being squeezed into a triangle. So let's draw that in. It's going to be a little rough. It's not that neat. So there's the top line, three touches, nice. And the bottom line we can draw from here. We've only got two touches on the bottom line unless you want to include some of these other ones down here, but basically two touches. Do we need a third touch before we decide what's going to happen next? We may have to reach the bottom of the triangle, which is what the hedges and some of the speculators now think, or we may break out through the top. Because of that divergence and disparity on the cut report, I think through the top is more likely than through the bottom or down towards the bottom.
If we do get down to the bottom, we might have to follow a path like this. Once again, please forgive the mouse pad drawn line. Something like that. And that could take us down to, let's say, $2.25. That's a very important level, which we've been looking at it for a long time. It's also the 61.8% Fibonacci of this move up from this last swing low. And that's at around about 2.25. This is what the hedges and the speculators both think is likely to happen. One of them is likely to be wrong, as I said. Alternatively, if that's not the case, I expect we might do something like this instead. <laughs> Another terrible line. But you get the idea. So one of these two things is most likely to happen. What we do know is we've got this triangle forming at the bottom of a very long term range. And normally this triangle would represent a reversal. Triangles are not great. So I'd say probably maybe 60, 40 percent chance of this breaking up rather than down. Doesn't mean, though, however, that we don't have to test the bottom first. So keeping that all in mind and my long position over on the continuous prices at 2.22, um, I've still got plenty of space to breathe on this. I don't like holding this for too long because of the overnight carry costs, which are quite expensive on natural gas. So I'm hoping that we'll follow the green path rather than this one down here. But if we do get down to that 2.25 level on the futures, remembering we're rolling over into $3 as it currently stands. And that rollover is on Tuesday when we're rolling from the November contract into the December contract. We can go back to the COT report and have a look at the stack. And the current price in November is at 2.56. Look where we roll over into in December. 3.09. So that's a 53 cent gap. We are even higher in January at 3.44. And then we start to slump off out from February onwards going into the warmer season. So back to the charts. Remember on Tuesday, we're going to sort of roll over up into this level here, just above $3, 3.09 as it stands at the moment, below that peak, but above this one. And whether we'll be able to dribble all the way back down to that trend line or not is unlikely. I don't think so. But the rollover might take place underneath this trend line. We haven't got there. Remember, it's only on Tuesday. So when we roll over, we might roll over at, say, 294, 295, not right up at where it is at the moment, but over here on the rollover, which would keep us within this triangle and indicate we are likely to at least test 2.5 again and maybe 2.25. Alternatively, on the rollover, once we get up here on Tuesday, uh, we'll just carry on moving up and not look back. I think that's unlikely the way the futures are positioned at the cut report and the way everything's looking over there and also the very stagnant price movement. We don't know what's going to happen with the dollar. We don't know what's going to happen with the elections. It's all going to change up in this next week. So be really, really careful. Natural gas is affected as anything else is by these elections and what's going on during this week. Uh, and perhaps even more so than other instruments. Natural gas and crude oil are hot topics in this election, as you know. And so um, the new administration is going to have a lot to say about where these prices go. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love your thumbs up and subscription. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Just as long as I'm able Watching those candlesticks Hoping for a rise Gotta stay sharp Keep my eyes on the prize